other pettier owners would have got them out of here just because they all they've been a bigger headache than anything else. Any bad owners would have gotten them out of here, by the way. Go ahead. Well, I didn't want to make that distinction because uh, if most of them are, are one thing, is it bad relatively or is that just how owners are in sports? Any bad owner would have just caved and made the trade. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're, we are back. Um, bullshit network as ever, I guess. Um, I am the unforgettable one himself, Mr. Brett Carroll. Charles is always daydreaming. We're two guys that like discussing other people's excellence. We have, we have a jam packed show for you guys. Um, obviously, the crux of this one is going to be the Brooklyn Nets and the amazing offseason that they have had. But we do, well, I don't want to be a tease. We do have a couple of things I want to get into before we get into that because. You know, this is like our NBA pod, and Brett totally wants to be a tease. Don't let him lie to you. It's fine, true. Uh, but this is like our NBA pod, and unfortunately for the Nets, they're not the only people that did stuff this summer. Uh, so we got a couple things we want to get into. Two of the two of the biggest ones were Utah Jazz All Stars going to other teams, and Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. Uh, I guess we could start with Donovan Mitchell. What it means for the Knicks? What it means for the Jazz? What it means for the Cavaliers? Go ahead, you start because I'm about to stop the washer so it doesn't keep beeping okay well i think for the jazz it's a great trade they've had a great off season combined with the five picks from the utah uh from minnesota they have five picks from them they pretty much have five picks from cleveland three unprotected and two swaps i believe or vice versa but either way they acquired sexton and uh marketing and the jazz you've had a optimal off season for the moves they made. If, if I said a year ago, the Jazz are going to trade Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, I don't think anybody would have guessed the haul they would have got for those two players. Um, Donovan Mitchell, the, the, the Jazz were asking such a ridiculous asking price of the Knicks, specifically, like they wanted RJ, they wanted all the young pieces and like something in total, like seven picks. And the Knicks were getting killed for not getting Spider-Man. And I just, I can't kill the Knicks. I can't kill the Knicks for this. I wouldn't have made the trade. They got RJ, who's averaging 20 points per game. Why are they, are they going to trade this young core when they got all these picks? They can keep building. They can have a nice roster. But more towards Cleveland, Cleveland is doing a great job. Um, Sexton wasn't, wasn't, wasn't bad, but he wasn't what they needed and moving him and getting Donovan Mitchell in return. I think any Cavs fan would have signed up for that when they drafted him. Um, so that's cool. And honestly, the Cavs roster as a whole is looking fun and like one, like kind of like how the Bucks look five years ago. When people were just like, hey, man, start paying attention to Giannis' squad, uh, like when Kid took him over, maybe a little bit more than five years ago. But, uh, like, all those types of young teams. I don't think they're going to be as ascendant as fast as, say, the Booker's sons were or something like that, but they're in the East. So I think their floor should be, like, beyond the play-in. They should honestly just get in or be a team that's... Well, they're going to gonna make the playoffs. So. Oh, yeah, but I mean like a solid six seed or five seed. You know what I mean? Like, they could do... I, I think the Cavaliers are going to be one of those teams. They're going to be a top four seed every year. I wouldn't be surprised if they're a top three seed every year because in the regular season, it's easy to stack wins when you have talent, and they have talent. Um, I think it's a great trade for them. Colin Sexton was somebody they didn't want to bring back anyway. Uh, for the Knicks, I'm with you, man. I, and a lot of Knicks fans are going to say, oh, you're just trolling us because, like, you're a Nets fan. I'm like, no, like, the problem with the Knicks was this would have been the same mistake they would have made every single time, which was simply you're building something, you're building something, you're building something. And the moment you had a little bit of a setback, it's like, oh, blow it up and start over. Like, bro, have some patience. I applaud them for not trading the whole farm for Donovan Mitchell because the problem is once you do that, Donovan Mitchell isn't going to help you win a championship because you have no team. And even if you were to try to then trade your remaining assets to get a second star a year or two from now, again, I don't care who that person is. Let's say Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell and nobody else is not getting you out of the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. So I applaud the Knicks for like not doing that and being a little bit more patient. So other stars will be disgruntled. And, and that's the funny thing. 
draft picks and players don't have the same value, right? The, when you have a whole bunch of draft picks, that means you're going to have to trade all those draft picks to get the guy you want. Mm-hmm. You have actual players, even if they're young and unproven, that's still more value than having picks. So if you continue to draft well, again, a year or two from now, you can trade whoever you drafted in, with the uh, 2023 draft. And that could be the centerpiece of your package. You could trade whoever you got in the 2024 draft, and that could be the centerpiece of your package. And that way you're not sending as many assets to get these young st- the stars you want. And that way when they come to your team, they actually have a team around them instead of instead of trading everything that you already have, plus every draft pick you have in the future to get them. And now they're here and they're by themselves. So not to mention, not to mention that RJ Barrett, people that, you know, Knicks fans overrate their players so much historically, not necessarily their historic players, but just in the history, Knicks fans will overrate their current roster because they're Knicks fans and more props to you. That's what good fans do. Right. Um, And, I just want to say as a Nets fan, we're not trolling and RJ Barrett is good. Like that's not an insult. That's not us saying, Oh, he's just good. No, he's good. Like don't just give him up for a player that isn't going to take, make you take that next step. Next step. You are just cutting into the time you have with this good player. RJ Barrett, if he was in a different draft class, Knicks fans would feel so much better about him because he was in that Zion class and Zion, even though he doesn't play much when he played, it's, it's already proven that the dude's a megastar. And John Morant has proven that he's a megastar. John, I mean, R.J. Barrett looks like he's just going to be a star. So that's why it's like, oh, so much R.J. hate with Knicks fans. But it's like if he was any in any other draft, you guys would be like, no, he's untouchable. But because he's not Zion or John Morant, it's like, uh, he's a bum, get rid of him. Like, no, let's see what he can become. I mean, he's, he's growing the way you're supposed to grow. You know, John Morant and Zion Williamson are just special cases where from day one, they were superstars. That doesn't have. I just can't wrap my head around the same haters and critics of the James Harden trade for us are shitting on the Knicks right now. And the same uh, people that hated the mellow trade for New York for all the right reasons in, in retrospect are mad the Knicks didn't do a worse version of that. No disrespect to Spider. I'm not trying to make the whole mellow Donovan Mitchell comparison because that's not fair to either player and what they're good at, right? But it's the same thing. It's the same thing from a Knicks perspective. You have this roster keep building. Only this time, it's younger. Like, the oldest dude that's part of your core is Julius Randle. Like, keep building it, man. You got a, you got a point guard that wants to be there. You got a, a, you just re-signed two of your rookies for the first time in damn near 30 years. Like, this is good. This is like, I, like but it's just crazy to me. The same people that are shitting on the Mets for, for, for blowing up their 2019 team, air quotes, is right now shitting on the Knicks for having it's faith the in their pro- core. It's the problem with the Knicks culture. The Knicks culture is, oh, we need a star. We're not a we're not a mid market team. We don't build through the draft. We we should attract stars. We're we're Madison Square Garden. We're Sixth Avenue. We're Wall Street. We're we you know we're we're Times Square. We deserve a star. We don't want to build the Nets. You guys are the second. You guys are the little brothers. You should do it the right way. And it's like, bro, honestly, you should do it however works for you. And what works for you, for most teams is building through the draft. And the problem, like I said, the problem with the Knicks is they do it. And then it's like, okay, cool. Let's trade it all away. Like, no, you do it like a step or two too early. Again, draft, draft well again. And I know for Knicks fans that say, oh, well, we don't draft well. I get that argument. I get that argument. It's, like, hey, it's a new regime. Like you can't keep you. going off of 20, the last 20 years. Thank you. Like, that's, a, that's what I was going to say. If it was the old regime, I would, I would agree with you, but it's not, it's a new regime and they have been drafting well. So continue to do that and see what happens. And then, yeah, if that team plateaus, great. Then hopefully you have a bunch of young assets that you can then trade for stars without having to give up everything. They just re-signed Mitchell Robinson. Props to the Knicks for developing him to get that second contract. He's a G League dude, and I say that as a fan of the G League. Um, and then you got the RJ, and you just signed a young guard in Brunson. You still have some faith in Randall and coming back from what he was two years ago. Run it back in the East. Like, the Knicks are close. They're pretty much 
it should be better than what the Cavs were last year. Like it's, it remains to be seen what Donovan Mitchell's going to do with that roster, right? I don't want to overrate him or underrate him right now. So I think they're still all huddling around the play into the sixth seed. That's just me, though. Well, here's the thing. They're, they're not close, and I get it. That's why they. Well, that's why they're saying, "Well, if we're not close, why even wait?" Because at, again, if you do this too early, you're gonna you're gonna have an expensive roster that's gonna have the same ceiling again. Donovan Mitchell, if on that team with nobody else, is getting you the same place, playing slash six seed at best. You can do that with the roster you currently have if you keep developing them and then trade and upgrade from there. You don't want to upgrade when you're at the bottom just to become a first round exit. That's not why you do this. So that's the problem. Continue to develop, become a consistent playoff team, and then make the trades if you need to make the trades to upgrade. The Cavs last year should not have been in the playoff plan. They were the third seed all year. They got decimated with injuries. They they free fall out of the standings and lost in the playing game, which is why I'm saying with, with this Donovan Mitchell trade, this is a great trade for them because they were already a playoff team that now upgraded, and now they'll be a top seed. And again, they're not going to win a championship championship this year but they're so young that them in Boston are going to be in it for a long time once once the Nets are old and gone once Philly's old and gone the the Cavs and the and the Celtics should still be there because they're so young so that's why if you're a Cavs fan you got to be excited you're not going to win a championship anytime soon but you're going to be in the mix for a long time and 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 it's good for them and look and I'll say this for the Cavs and LeBron, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Because right now, they don't have a, a small forward. This is a perfect team that if you were to just pluck a, a good small forward in there, now they could be a championship team. And I can see LeBron in two years when his new contract is done saying, hey, I'll take less money to go back home. I'll take less money to be the starting small forward on, on the fucking Cavaliers. And I'm coming home. Try to win Coming another down. title again and, and really submit myself as the greatest Ohioan of all time. I can see him doing it. And so that's if you're a Cavs fan, that's what you're excited. If you're the Jazz, Danny Ainge, I don't know what nude pictures you have of all these GMs, but he cannot keep getting away with these hauls that he gets as as robbery. It's, I'm telling you, he he goes to the this is what happens, guys. These billionaires and these and these executive type, they're all weird. They have a they have an orgy every year. And Danny Ainge is the one taking pictures when he's not supposed to. So then when he goes to do these trades, he's like, hey, what would happen if your wife sees this? That's what he's doing. There's no other explanation for this. Cause because he cannot continue to do this. He got 20 picks for Rudy Gobert. That's ridiculous. And and I know the Timberwolves are desperate, but that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, no I, I'm story. not trying to trash them and because all people are going to say about us is like oh you're just mad you didn't get 20 picks for kevin durant or some bullshit like that so it's one of those things where well not so much you maybe more me but, but uh i don't know man like i, I don't get it either i just for, don't for like team. celtics fans are convinced he's the greatest gm ever and now jazz fans should jazz fans right no, no, listen if, if the celtics and the jazz should be praising danny Ainge, they really should he's done a fantastic job i just for, for the life of me i don't understand how you know what he's going to negotiate as you know what i mean like you know he's going to ask for the sun the moon and the stars and maybe a planet as well and yet they still do it and it's like and, and sometimes they're like even more like hey we'll we'll give you our second moon it doesn't make any sense and that's what i'm saying now in terms of the to, the timberwolves this to me there is no besides the nets and players and obviously we'll get into them later to me there's no player under more pressure this year than carl anthony towns in the entire league there's no more hey, another hold on i'm glad you brought him up and we did not plan this but the knicks have the picks to possibly if this shit goes sideways in, in, in Minnesota to get him home. Cause he grew up a Knicks fan and we're talking about the roster and who do they keep and all this other shit. They have the picks just to get the money matching and get him and keep their young core. Mm -hmm. If shit goes South this year in Minnesota, just saying, cause the Minnesota could keep their other young players and just say, no, 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 just give us the picks. Yeah. I mean, Carl Anthony towns and I love him. First of all, 
I love not just him. His father is always cool to me when I see him. Rest in peace, his mother. His mother was always a sweetheart when I met her. I'm rooting for Carl Anthony Towns. Obviously, he's from Jersey, so I root for him. But, brother, you, there's pressure on you. Because really what the Jazz are saying to you is, all right, bro, you didn't want to be a center. You didn't want to bang down low. You didn't want to play defense. You didn't want to get rebounds. You wanted to stay out on the perimeter and have more of a perimeter game. Fine. We are going to mortgage our entire future to get a center to take those jobs away from you. If that's the case, you're going to have to be a top five scorer in the league this year. He's going to have to be. That's that's what his new role is. Like, hey, if this is what you want to be, then fine. And by the way, I applaud the Jazz for doing that because when you have a star like that, that is really good, but isn't perfect, has, has some major deficiencies. You, there's either one or two ways you can go about doing it. Either demand that they get better at what they're not good at or create an environment where it's like, hey, okay, fine, do what you do, but you better do it to the maximum ability of what you can do. And that's what the Jazz have done. They've eliminated his ability to have to play defense, to have to block shots, to have to get rebounds, to have to bang down low. And they said, fine, we accept you for who you are. You want to be a perimeter player. Then fine. But brother, you better be a top scorer. He's going to have to average, to me, probably 30 points a game. And he's going to have to do it efficiently. Or else this doesn't make sense to do this. And that's a lot of pressure on him because, it's, like, we say that this isn't 2K, right? That's very hard to do. To average 30 plus a game with maximum efficiency, efficiency, especially if he's not going to be next to the rim. If he's going to be doing jump shots and stuff like that, you know, doing it on maximum efficiency, that's going to be hard. And I'm not saying he can't do it, but what, I'm, what I am saying is he's going to have to for this team to get to where they want to get to. Um, and so we'll see. You know, we, we will see. But I, I commend them for having that much faith in him and saying, hey, look, we believe you can do it, but you got to show it to us. They gave him an extension, a max extension. He's making a lot of money. They brought in Rudy Gobert. They're saying, this is your franchise, Cat. You know, take it over. You and Ant-Man are going to have to be two of the top five scorers in the league if we're going to win, if we're going to win anything meaningful. We'll see. I, I don't, you know, it'll be fun to watch. I think I think it'll be very fun to see to see what this team can be. To, normally the Twin Towers thing hasn't really worked before, but I'm not in a while. So we'll see. I mean, but I'm, not, but, not since uh, the Admiral and uh, Tim Duncan. Yeah, but who's you know, but who's say it won't work? You know what I mean? So we'll see. I, they'll, they should be a very fun team to watch. Ant Man is one of the most entertaining young players in the league. Carl Anthony Towns, when he's on fire, he is a really great scorer. So you know, that's what his job is going to have to be. All right, before a couple of things I wanted to get into. There's been some players that have been caught under fire over the last couple of weeks. One. Last week, Gilbert Arenas was talking shit about Giannis, saying he doesn't know how to play basketball and stuff like that. And there's this huge debate about why Giannis particularly gets picked on. And there's a lot of theories. A lot of people think, oh, because he's from, you know, Greece and he's not from here and da 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 I don't think it's any of that. I think it's simply because there has always been a divide in the world of sports, basketball in particular, but in the world of sports of, skill guys versus freaking nature guys there's always been that war that culture war in the sports especially in basketball because tall man always wins and when you can jump higher than everybody else you're taller than everybody else you should be better than everybody else because it's a game built around height and so with Giannis I think it's the fact that he doesn't have a bag the fact that he doesn't have skills like these other guys do people hate on him because like, well, if I was your height with your athleticism, I would be unstoppable too. You're not that great. You don't, you, you can't. And, and these are some things I've heard players say. No, I've heard players say it too. I'm just, but I, but at, at this point now, right. It's kind of like the LeBron Dallas Mavericks argument. It's outdated guys. It made a lot of sense a couple of years ago or now, you know, not in the case of LeBron, that's over a decade ago now. With Giannis, I was saying these things a couple of years ago. Now, not only did he win a ring, take, like like well, you like saying it's you know team sports a lot of the time, and he's a superstar that a superstar that drove for that ring, so you will give him that props. But me and you were upset that year at him in a very you know Nets Bucks rivalry way. But 
since then, his rookie year to then to now, he's been done nothing but improve. Every single year, he's gotten better. So if we're going to keep saying he has no bag, okay, stop him. Because people say he's not unstoppable. I want to know, like, wait, he's not unstoppable? This dude's dropping 50 in the playoffs. Just like. Well, no, they're, they're, what they're saying is you're only unstoppable because of your God-given body and athletic ability. I have I have one historical name to throw out there because of that. The, the answer, all these people. Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. That, but that that's always been the argument. And, and, and again, the reason why I say that's the reason, because they said the same thing about LeBron early in his career too, right? Back when he wasn't considered the greatest shooter and all this other stuff. They said, well, he's 6'8", 260, and is a locomotive going to the basket. He's not good. He's just a freak of nature that nobody can stop. He's not that good. Now, just like Giannis, LeBron has improved – his skill set. So now people don't say that anymore because he because he became a reliable shooter. I mean, he's always had a good handle, but his handle's gotten even better. He's recognized as one of the greatest passers of all time. So yeah, that, he's a point So that yeah, so that part of it has been gone. But the first before he won a chip, obviously those first like eight or so years, a lot of people were hating on LeBron too because it's like, bro, you're on, you know. And again, I didn't agree with it, but it's like you're only good because you're you have a freak of nature body type. You know, God just created the perfect basketball player, really. Like, that's what it was. Um, or at least basketball body. Hold on. I, I want to get to the Nets because my, my, my honest feeling to went to this news report about especially who you started with, Gilbert Arenas. Now, he's way better of a basketball player than me. Don't get it twisted. But, Gilbert, who the fuck are you to the Greek freak in the legacy of, of the NBA? Like, what are we talking about? Who is this in the Greek freak? And to be fair, to be fair to Gilbert Arenas, he clarified his statements later. And what he was saying was, like, dude, if he doesn't know basketball now and he's doing this, good Lord, help us all when he does. So yeah. He, like, so, so to let me let me be fair to Gilbert Arena. Because at first, a lot of people, like, oh my God, Gilbert, what? But he clarified, he was, he was saying, no, you, you guys missed what I'm saying. I'm saying he's dominating and the boys don't even know how to play basketball yet. Lord help all of you. I think I think it has a, a big factor of the Giannis hate is that he's from Greece. And a big factor of this Gianni, Giannis hate is that he didn't grow up loving basketball like that. But at the same time, he went like pro at like 15. What do we, you know, like what is, what's the, the, the like, reason why I don't think it's the Greece thing is because there's been plenty of European players and they don't get the hate that Giannis does. It, it really is like a Giannis. I mean, I mean, I mean, European players get hate. Most people like from Tony Parker to even Luca. Now there's always going to be people that are throwing shade at those guys. Like they really ain't that good. They're overrated because they're international. Like it, it, it goes back forever now. So that is, that's always going to be a factor. Just well, like he's but not like Giannis though. Giannis is a different type of hate. It's you know a, a different type of hate, but Oh, and then well, hold on. I know you're itching to get to this. Yeah, game. man, you keep stalling. Enough of this hold stalling. On. Just, just relax. It's an yeah. NBA pod. Ain't nobody NBA. give a shit. I want to get to the Nets. All right, we'll get to the Nets. What, what, what other random shit are you doing we, to we, stall? We've from only talking been about for like ten minutes. Keep relax. Stalling. Just you're relax. Stalling. Just. I'm not stalling. Fucking filibustering. We haven't fucking. recorded all summer. There's a lot that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of shit happened all summer, but all one right. thing dominated. All right, listen, listen. Listen, guys, again, we've been recording for like 10 minutes. We're going to talk for another hour and a half about the Nets. I think you guys can wait another It's been time. a half hour. It has not been a half hour. Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Hold on. You texted me that you were getting on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm about to call you out right now. Okay. At 2.20, at 2.20, I said, okay. What that and then we hopped on a couple minutes after that because I had to reboot my computer. So it has only been like 10 minutes. Relax. I know it feels like a half an hour because you're itching to rip the nets. That was 207, bro. When I ret when I responded and you read it, because again, you keep your re-receipts on, it was 220. We did not get on the pod yet. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's only been two, it's only been 10 minutes. He's a liar. I, okay. We're tracking my phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the same thing you're looking at. Okay, we're like lying. The other, the other thing that has the other story that kind of dominated the offseason, uh, Taylor Rooks called Damian Lillard not an all star, 
And so that made me think, or a superstar, I'm sorry. She said she's not a superstar. And so that sparked a lot of debate of, oh, is there too many superstars? Or we just throw that name out there a little too crazy. I have a different take on that. I think for the, I think the problem is, well, not even a problem, it's a good thing. The thing about it is I think there's a lot of great players in the NBA now, and that's a good thing. And I think there's a lot of guys that are indeed superstars to the point where I think we need to start creating new levels. When me and you did the um, tier list for the young QBs, we had lists that went beyond superstar. And, 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 and Kyler Murray, I think, was the one young QB we put in the actual superstar category because we said he's much better than these guys, but he's nowhere near these guys. But he's a superstar. And I think in the NBA, it's the same thing. There's a lot of guys. There's probably 20 to 25 guys you can label as a superstar in the NBA. And people are going to say, oh, that's too much. I said, no, there's a lot of great players. Almost every team has at least one really good player on it. There's a lot of superstars in the league, but just because you're a superstar doesn't mean you're LeBron, Giannis, you know, Embiid, uh, stuff like that. There, there are levels to this. And I think that's a good thing. Ten years ago, the NBA was really bad. There was no talent. Ten years ago in 2013, Blake Griffin was the second greatest player, was the second best player in the league. Paul George was the third best player in the league. And no offense to those guys. No offense to those guys, but if they're your second and third best player in the league, you're in trouble. But that's what it was. Kevin Durant hadn't fully come on yet as a superstar yet. You know, some of these other guys hadn't fully come on as a superstar yet. Like the league was, matter of fact, Nets, Cavs, Wizards, uh, Pistons, they had, they didn't even have NBA rosters. Half their rosters, half the guys on the roster were like G League level players. And we're starting. That's how bad some of the bad teams in the NBA was. And they were going through a really bad talent drought. Now, I think the NBA is as healthy as they've ever been, where, like I said, almost every team has at least one, quote unquote, star level player on it. Um, so I think from now on, we need to readjust how we think of the word superstar, because I think there's a lot of superstars. There's just another level of elite, elite players and that's where a Damian Lillard or a Kyrie or whoever isn't part of that. Because I don't think I don't think there, there's no world where you can say Damian Lillard is not a superstar. If Damian Lillard is playing, me and you are going to watch him play. Correct? Yes. That's, a, that's a superstar to me. That's a superstar. That, that my, the analogy I've always used is if you're on a business trip and you're in a random city and somebody says, hey, man, you want to go to – there's a game tonight, and you ask who's playing. If I say this player – you're going to say, oh, shit, yeah, let's go see it. If I say that player and they say, eh, what else What else you want to do tonight? Yeah, that means they're probably not a superstar. Damian Lillard is one of those guys. If I say, yeah, Damian Lillard is playing tonight, hmm, okay, if you can get tickets, let's go. That's the superstar. That is the superstar. And I think people are trying to be too old school or saying, oh, there can't be more than five or six superstars in the league. Bullshit. There's a lot of great players. There's a lot of great players. Is John Morant not a superstar? People are in denial about what era we're in now. There's still people acting like the '90s are coming back. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there. There's levels to this, man. And there's a, and, and again, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. You want a league that is in flux, that has an influx of talent. So you don't want a league where there's only five guys in the entire league that are any fucking good, because that's not good entertainment. That's why these guys are getting paid so much because almost every night, almost every game, there's at least some marketable player that you can watch. And that's what and I not. I mean, unless you're a Nets fan, then you know, you don't know when they're going to be playing. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Yes. That's a great segue. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead and get started with your Nets, with your Nets rant. <laughs> with my Nets rant. Oh, okay. I don't really have a rant because of one reason. And that's Brett. If we recorded this a month ago, it would have been a lot different of a vibe in a rant. And I there, I would have never went 30 minutes of Brett talking about other stuff a month ago. But here we are. It's September, Labor Day weekend. And supposedly next year, we're running it back, air quotes, because that's going to be the first time we're going to see uh, Ben Simmons in a Nets jersey. Or, you know, because we've seen them on the court in terrible clothing before. But this summer, everyone knows Kyrie wanted a big uh, extension, didn't get it, uh, went with a player option. And then immediately, you know, after that news broke, 
KD was asking out. There's rumors and stories about how he thought he was going to be gone during the, the Celtics series. And then th- those rumors break a couple weeks pass by because the Nets aren't stupid and they're not just trading him for peanuts. Or as Brett was saying at the time, we're not going to trade him for pennies on the dollar. Um, and we didn't. The Nets stuck to their guns. Uh, props to Joe Sy and Sean Marks. And one thing that I would like to say that Brett was highlighting the whole time, especially to the Nets haters out there, is we weren't defending the right of Steve Nash to coach our team. There wasn't a contingent of Nets fans going, nah, man, we need to keep Steve Nash. There was a contingent, and I and Brett are in this contingent of Nets fans saying, we're not firing Sean Marks. We can't do that. That is stupid. He's the best GM in Nets history. With that being said, there was an ultimatum from Kevin. And then obviously Josiah had the back backing of the roster that Kevin had some words in. And here we are. He's coming back. They're running it back. The whole summer, Brett has been saying he wants to see this incarnation of the team. Granted, he says that he believes that Ben Simmons is the missing piece. I don't think he is. I've never been a big Ben Simmons fan, as anyone listening to this pod for this, any amount of time would be able to tell. But he is on the court what the Nets have needed, a power forward that plays defense. Kevin Durant's Kevin Durant, and if Kyrie decides to play, he's Kyrie fucking Irving, as I like to say. So the ceiling is, is championship. My opinion now is is championship or bust, period. I was a proponent of trading both of them for the right trade. Uh, Addition by subtraction after a certain point, because you're barely playing. I don't think the both of them have played 50 games together. Is that right? Is that like the accurate number? Oh, no, don't care, but keep going. Okay. He doesn't know he doesn't care because all the greatest teams never play. But – We also have a bet if this big three will play at least 40 games together. I say no, because two thirds of them might not have not played 40 games with each other, period. Mm -hmm. So I don't have faith in in something I haven't seen in three years. We're entering year four. I am quite sick and tired as a Nets fan of saying it's just year whatever of this when the whole point of them signing to the 2019-2020 Nets was because that was already a playoff team with a culture, a team and a culture that they had a hand in dismantling. And then the second going gets a little tough, it is everybody pointing the finger and zero leadership, zero leadership from anybody that Brett would describe in the big three. So that's where my doubt is. How do you win a title with no leaders? Because saying you're a leader and being a leader are two different things. There are plenty of assholes in this world that that, that think they're leaders. There's only a few people that are actually leaders or have the quality of leadership. And in this time where they made a bunch of demands The only positive for Nets fans, well, besides having a championship-ready roster on paper, is they finally got humbled. Reality hit them. Because Brett was like, why do you want to trade them? To what was Brett was saying earlier, when we look at the East a couple years from now, one team that's not on there, because we're being realistic, is the Nets. Kai, love them. 30, bro. I'm 33. 30, 30 is a different era of your life. And when you've had an in, injury history, your body doesn't usually stay loyal. That's why the Tom Brady's are the freaks of the world. Kevin Durant, same thing. He's played 90 games for the Nets in three years. That's not a lot. To guys credit, last uh, two seasons ago, he played the most out of any of the big three. That was including Harden, and Harden was a walking triple double. Everyone thought he played the most, so I just haven't seen it. And I'm at the point where the only reason they've gotten this courtesy is because the owner wants return on his investment, 
other pettier owners would have got them out of here just because they all they've been a bigger headache than anything else. Any bad owners would have gotten them out of here, by the way. Go ahead. Well, I didn't want to make that distinction because uh, if most of them are, are one thing, is it bad relatively, or is that just how owners are in sports? Any bad owner would have just caved and made the trade. Yeah. Props to Joe Sai for not doing that. I want to know if how I'm being too emotional because I'm not supposed to care about the, 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 what everything Brett says. You don't got to care about the regular season. Oh, and you don't got to care about getting swept in the playoffs. Swept, swept, swept. Yeah. Hold on, I, want, I decided I wanted to say it four times. That's why. Because that's how many games we, we lost in a row to have an exit with two guys that thought they were they could just demand a trade and the whole league would offer them trades. Brett, you got to explain yourself, bro, because apparently you just don't care. I don't. This is the- No, I mean about anything. You don't care about losing. You don't care about the Nets. You don't care about what happened because nothing matters. Let me take y'all back in time, right? <clears throat> the regular season doesn't matter. You said that multiple times on that's propaganda. When they signed here, I said, be ready for the drama. Be ready for the headache. Be ready for every offseason feeling like it lasts an eternity because unless you're winning a ring, it's not going to matter. And I told you this was going to happen because I've witnessed it. And, and you guys said, oh, no, it's never going to be like that. We love the regular season. We love it. This is going to be great. And I said, mm, okay, okay. Understand when you're talking, dealing with superstar athletes and the media capital of the world, this was going to be a shit show. I knew that from day one. And has it been worse than I thought it would, than even I thought it was going to be? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. I ain't going to sit here and pretend that I knew that all this shit was going to happen. However, this is par for the course, bro. This is literally par. You got to remember, I come from people asking grown men if other grown men were like fathers to them. You have to say grown men with like dads in their lives, though. You have to clarify. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because that I'm could grown, be like a positive thing you're saying. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I get to clarify. Grown men if, uh, with dads already in their lives. Thank you for saying dads. Question, with, with other questions, getting questions about teammates. If they who are only seven years older than them, if they are like the father figure they've never had, that's why that's what I you know was part of. Okay, so this is a cakewalk <laughs> compared to that bullshit. Uh, no, it's not because that bullshit ended in a ring after how many years? Okay, great. No, 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 no. Answer it. How many years? Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I let you talk. I let you talk. Let oh. me, you asked me. I'm about to tell you. So now here we are. And I said, when Kevin Durant made the tra- trade request, I said, oh, okay, he's emotional. Wait it out, they'll be fine. Stop calling everybody emotional, Brent. And, 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 and Charles and everybody said, oh my God, you don't get it. He asked for a trade. Get rid of him. If he doesn't want to be here, I don't want him. And I said, oh, damn. Because that's not an impression of me. Because that's, the, the, cause that's, how, that's how that works. I said, hmm. We've seen other players ask for trades before. Matter of fact, Aaron Rodgers, for the last three years, we thought he was gone. And Charles said, well, that doesn't count. They won championships with those teams. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point I'm making. It's, it would have been easier to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. It would have been easier to get rid of Kobe Bryant. That's a, That was the funny thing. God rest Kobe Bryant's soul. People kept comparing Kevin Durant to Kobe Bryant over the also Kobe would never do this. I'm sorry. What? Kobe never said that shit. Don't say I said that shit. You didn't, but people did. I said Kobe did this. I'm 33. I remember Kobe demanding a trade a bunch of times. I'm like, Kobe did this twice. Do we not forget this? Kobe got rid of Shaq, then was mad that the team sucked because Shaq was gone and asked for a trade then. Again, asked for a trade again. Again. So so I'm like, what do you mean? To be clear, at least when he compared it to Aaron Rodgers and Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, I was like, please stop. Especially with LeBron, because LeBron's won everywhere he's been. Like that, that's his legacy at this point, right? Like, let me just like let's be real. My Terrible point, comparison. My point especially is, for Kevin Durant. My point <laughs> is people ask for trades all the time. And Charles is Except for LeBron. LeBron. No, LeBron, but but LeBron asked everybody else to get traded. Okay, so I had to throw you the alley oop. I had to throw you the alley oop. 
And I'm a LeBron fan, but like, come on, stop. Both LeBron fans. We just, you know. Like, stop it. So, and my thing is, yeah, it's easier to trade somebody once you, what's the point of getting a, a player to get a championship out of them, right? So if I already got championships out of, if I already got a championship out of Aaron Rodgers, if I already got three out of Kobe, it would have been easy to say, all right, you want to get trade? Fine, bye. We already got what we wanted out of you. If I'm Joe Sy, I said, whoa, brother, whoa, brother. Y'all ain't deliver. I've delivered everything that you wanted. You have not delivered back. I'm not trading you. You have four years left in your deal. I'm not trading you. And so all the Nets fans that were like, oh, my God, they want to leave. They want to get traded. Get whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's really disingenuous, especially when it comes to the, when, when the reports that uh, Kyrie had a list of, of teams to get traded to. It's just annoying. You can't act like, yo, that, that's so disingenuous of you. That's so disingenuous. You, you, you are happy with how it's turned out? Again, Kobe Bryant said. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm asking that. you, Brett. I, I didn't ask about Kobe Bryant. You, you are I happy. You are you happy with how it's turned out? This Kyrie KD era in in, in Brooklyn. I didn't are say I happy? was. I didn't say I was. I didn't say I was. But hold on, I let you talk. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah, we're crying over. Oh my God, here's a list. Oh my, oh no, the, the the fucking list. What are we gonna do? Here's a list. Oh God, like what are we talking about? Kobe Bryant said he'd rather play on Pluto than play on with the Lakers again, and he won two more championships. And he also played more than ninety games in three years. Okay, I don't care. That you don't. So irrelevant. I'm just saying, how are you winning a that title if you don't play? So this is irrelevant to the point of the conversation. Yeah, because yes, it is because KD is 34, and usually when you're not playing a, a bunch of games, it doesn't mean you played more when you're 34, 35, 36, and 37. In Kyrie's case. We it's the most annoying feeling in the world because he is the New Jersey Nets fan that's supposed to come home and dog never wants to fucking play. Mm -hmm. So the only time you're going to play is when your contract's on the line. That means we can't even look forward to anything. It is literally championship or bust. Yeah, that's but, it. I, but I told yeah, you. Yeah, but you saying that, I told you that three years ago, you didn't expect this. You didn't expect none of this shit. The actual three years that it's been. Championship or bust means championship or bust. I don't care what the circumstances are, bro. Championship or bust. You means do when you're when yo when when you're big when your core of superstars that you're relying on to get you on the championship when they've played less than a collective season together in three seasons. That's terrible, terrible. But we knew that one season. Was no, 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 no. Like in three seasons, it's still three seasons. No matter you want to cut it, in three seasons, these two players have played less than one season together. You want to say it's been two seasons? They've played less than what sixty games together? Okay, but see, that's 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 revisionist history because again, you did know the first season was going to be like that. The second season was supposed to be like that, but then Giannis hurt Kyrie. And we know, and we know if Kyrie didn't get hurt, we would have won the chip two years ago. So last year, and last year was an utter disaster. We we which is again why I wasn't overreacting to the trade. Because when you have an utter disaster like last year was, people are going to get emotional and people are gonna look around and say, wait a minute, am I sure I want to sign up for this again? That's why I said wait it out. Because this is again. You said, oh, he wants to trade. He wants to be out of here. I said, yeah, but it's the same guy that on the first day of negotiation signed a four-year deal with, with no no trade clause, no opt-outs, no nothing. So obviously he was committed. And then the most crazy season of all time happened. So I'm not blaming him for being over-emotional and changing his mind. Just give him some time to cool the fuck off. He'll be back. I said that on, July, on June 30th when this all came down. And, and people were saying, oh, but the, the, guys, last year was an utter catastrophe. Like, okay, but it's over now. It's done. Is you it move, over? You move on. Wait, no, no, no. Why is it over? Wait, how is it over? What do you mean, how is it over? How is it over? What, what's the indication over. that the circus is over? That's like, that's the crazy part to me is that you're just like, well, everything's good now because it hasn't been. That's your whole the philosophy on going into this season. Well, now we're going to be good because Ben Simmons is here. 
I'm saying now we're going to be good because when you have a, a, a year that bad, you literally can't get any worse. Bro, yeah, we didn't get better. That's my point. We did get better. No, I like what we've done in the offseason, but we're not significantly better with Ben Simmons instead of James Harden. That's not, I don't, that's I, not, I, I just, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Ben Simmons and, Seth- and we still have Steve Nash. <laughs> like, like at the end of the day, you okay. were, you blamed the whole last playoffs on Steve Nash. Ben Simmons, you keep calling him a power forward. To me, he's going to play point guard, which is what he. No, I think I think he is playing power forward though. Well, that's a mistake. They, he needs to play point guard. They need a point guard. The one problem with with Kyrie and K, and Katie, which is again why they made the James Harden trade, is when it's just the two of them, it's just as your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. There's no offense. That was remember they were only like a game over five hundred before they made the James Harden trade. But that's but that's that's an issue in itself because we need a point guard when we have Kai on, on the team. Like we can't run an offense with Kai. Dude, okay, okay. Be, I'm just being serious. Like 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 that's not an issue. I think we should have. I'm not saying don't run Ben Simmons as a point forward. That's what I think he's gonna be. Like it, it's 2022, not 1992. You know what I mean? Him playing power forward doesn't mean yeah, don't run point, it. Right. As as long, right. Just opens up playing primarily powerful. I mean, point guard on offense. That's fine. Point forward, but like you right. know what I mean? Like set up an offense, but get in the paint when you're done. Like it, like it, it is what it is. We all know how to play it at this point. That's what uh, one of the big reasons why the Giannis ain't no longer makes sense. What do you talking about he doesn't have skills he sets stuff up he's not like completely ignorant anymore he, like yeah, but, but anyway point, uh, but when it comes to is ben simmons and seth curry to me was everything this team needed we needed defense we get that we like he gives us the playmaking ability that james harden gave us without the turnover by the way because the one problem with james harden is he the boy turned the ball over a, a ton ben simmons doesn't do that so he's giving you the playmaking abilities without the turnovers does he give you the shooting? No, but Seth Curry gives you better shooting than James Harden would. He's a better three point shooter than James Harden is. So but James Harden's a walking triple double. So is Ben Simmons. Not, not as not like James Harden. Like, okay, like can we? So he's not giving like, you. Like, a, like, let's not. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, like, he's not going to give you a thirty point triple double. You don't need him to do that on this team. You don't need him to do that on this team. You need him to facilitate the offense, which he will. You need to play defense, which he will, which James Harden will never give you. You need him to rebound, and he'll rebound just the same as James Harden will. So at the end of the day, you're getting everything that James Harden was giving you, plus much-needed defense and rebounding. So to me, I love the fit. And again, I'm not a Ben Simmons fan just like you are. But again, in sports, it's all about fit. The fit is actually perfect for this team. Fit is perfect. Now, the one thing I want us to do, and Sean Marks, please, for the love of God, do this now. Go trade for fucking Miles Turner. You put Miles Turner on this team, we are unstoppable. Because now we have three seven-footers on the floor, and he can shoot. So once again, you have Ben Simmons with a bunch of shooters, and the defense is better, and the rebounding is better, because that's what we need. Ben Simmons is a perfect fit for what we were supposed to, for what this team needs. And so it's not that Ben Simmons is this great player that puts us over the top. He, he fixes a lot of our flaws. That's what he does. And so people said, Oh, we got sweat. Ben Simmons is going to be 16 wins. No, that's not how that works with Kyrie and Katie. You know, you're going to be in every single game that you play. You add a guy like Ben Simmons, that puts you over the top of every game that you play. That's the difference. It's not that he's giving you those 16 wins. Millions of Sixers fans that will disagree with this, but okay. But they weren't in every single... That's what what you're not understanding. Our next team, yes, we got swept. It was by combined 18 points. You put Ben Simmons in those games, we probably win those games. It might be the reverse. It might be beating them by a combined 18 points. But if Ben Simmons is in the game, that's the that's the miniature difference between a win and a loss. That's that that's the point. I mean, our defense is better. We don't turn the ball over nearly as much, which means not easy points for them. He would have played defense on Jalen Brown slash Jason Tatum, so they're not going off. And the little offense that he gave us would have also helped. That's the difference. And people are so like, so again, we're Do we have at, a coach? Huh? Do we have a new coach? Like Ben Simmons handling the ball. We're not turning the ball over that much. Okay. Again, with Kyrie, like, 
as much as you know, I you know I do not like Steve Nash. You know I want that. So I'm just reminding you because that like you're acting like he's you don't have to remind me of how bad Steve Nash was. I was the one that said we're gonna lose this series because of Steve Nash. I know how bad Steve Nash is, but I also understand that having that point guard eliminates the Steve Nash factor. James Harden ran our offense. Ben Simmons will run our offense. When you don't have that guy, Steve Nash is like, oh, shit, we don't have a guy that can run the offense. Just give it to KD on the wing, even though I know the three guys waiting for him on the wing. So you eliminate the Steve Nash factor in this. You say, hey, listen, Ben, run the offense. Do what you do. And Ben will do that. And again, I'm not saying he's this juggernaut of a player that, that is unstoppable, but he fits perfectly with what we do he fits per- like the Patriots do that they don't get the greatest players they get guys that fit what they do and it makes sense on and what their system is and hides their flaws that's what they do that's what Ben Simmons will do for us and I agree it's championship or bust but I'm okay with that it was championship or bust the moment those guys signed so oh, it's been three years of bust okay that's f- bro, guys, not fine you can't that's keep that. That's you're lying, capping. Okay, telling we, falsehoods. We have not won again. Year one, we knew it was going to be a dud. Okay, like, Too like much. honestly, honestly, the only well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Year one, we knew it was going to be a dub, and year two was a catastrophe. So the only real letdown to me was year two, and that, and that, and again, that's because we knew, like, damn, bro, if we if we didn't get hurt, we we, we would have probably won it that year. So. You have, and again, it's these guys are signed long term. So well, but last year wasn't a catastrophe be, just because of injury. Like, like, no, I said year two. I said year okay, two. but I'm I'm just saying, like, it is like th- these factors haven't all gone away. That's all I'm, I keep saying. Like, okay, my point is, you got these guys signed long term. You have you have three, if not four, more cracks at it. Go go do it. No, we don't. We have we have two of them signed for the or, or past next year. It, it remains to be seen if Kyrie will be here next year. And that's yeah, not me well, saying it. That's not me saying I want that. That's me being no, no, a realist I, yeah, yeah, and looking at the situation. Is, yeah, my, yeah, and I'm not even looking in the future, but my point is you already know. No, you that's can. my point. You can't. We, we don't have the luxury of looking in the future. I, I, ironically, even though we were so happy when KD signed that extension, the circumstances of, of everything that's happened since, we can't even be optimistic about the future. And that's, that's fine. We're, we're it's not gonna, fine. You're going to take it year by year at a time. But my point is, you do know that you have Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant signed long term. So if nothing else, as long as it's not a disaster this year, you could always resign. And all I'm saying is all signs point to disaster. I I think I think the opposite. I think this. I know. I hope the opposite. I but I'll be I'm looking at the. the, My thing is last year was such a last year was such a disaster. And this offseason has been such a disaster that those three guys are going to be locked in this year because they know, again, I said it, Carl Anthony Towns has the most pressure outside of Brooklyn. I said that for a reason because Brooklyn has the most pressure. One, two, and three, most pressure in the NBA is all resides in Brooklyn. We know this. Matter of fact, you could probably, you could play say one through six because they all have double the pressure of anybody else. One through three is KD, Kyrie, Ben Simmons, and then five through six is reverse, Ben Simmons, Kyrie, KD. So we get it. And these guys, these guys, for everything that we want to say about them, they're not dumb. They know. They know what is at stake now with everything. They've been humbled. They thought they could get away with it. And the, the NBA market said, no, brothers, you're not getting away with this. So at the end of the day, they're going to show up. They're going to play. And I think even you would say, hey, listen, if you're guaranteeing me that they're going to show up and play, I feel good about our chances. To your point, you just don't, you're just not optimistic that anybody can guarantee you that. And I understand that. I understand that. I believe they will because I believe they have to. And because they have to, they will, and we'll be fine. Now, it's year one. So am I am I expecting a championship this year? It's not year one. Stop saying it. It's not year it's one. Year I, don't give one a fuck. I don't give a fuck. We just got Ben Simmons. It's not year one. You can't look at it like year one. That is bullshit. That is 100% bullshit. Okay. This is the first year with Ben Simmons. So if they could be the last year with Ben Simmons, like, let's be real. If they make the finals and don't win it, but they look good. I'm optimistic. 
Okay, that's I'll, I'll say that. I'm not being a dick about the championship or bust. If we lose in seven games and they all played 70 games and, and they're like, we're going to run it back next year. I'm not going to sit here like, oh, I told you I, I, this, this is a disaster. Nah, if they like, lose in the second round again. Yeah, fucking you, blow it up. Yeah, blow it up. Especially even if – and because at that point it won't matter the reason. If, if they're injured, if they're all this, if they're all that, it, you would have to blow it up. Because give me some credit. When you said why do you want to trade KD? I didn't have some some super emotional, oh, for fuck him reason. I said, look at his age, dude. Look at the years on his contract. If we can get a haul, if we get the, the, the basketball equivalent of a Herschel Walker trade, like 10 picks and, and a superstar back or something, we like how are we not uh, like taking a good look at that? I think, I think at the time when we were discussing it, the biggest rumor at the time connected to KD, uh, the two teams that we and you got serious about, I should say, or a little even halfway, were the Pelicans – the or the three teams pelicans raptors and uh celtics and the pelicans and the raptors were more because of all the all, of the youth we could have mixed with the amount of picks we could have especially the pelicans right with the with, with the celtics me and you had a real conversation about like Jalen brown with the right amount of picks like we have to think about that that is that's like something we have to think about and, and so it wasn't like you were like, oh, that's ridiculous. There are certain machinations that if we got, you were even like, I mean, but if, what, 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 other, what other things are out there? So well, 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 that's were, all I'm saying. You were He's okay with the Brown. He game. hasn't stayed healthy. It, mm-hmm. make, make, making a good trade isn't the end of the world in this situation. You were the one that was okay with the Jalen Brown. I didn't hear one trade that made me say, okay, yeah, that's great. I, I wasn't blown away by any trade, even rumors that were out there. Even the, the closest one was the Scotty Barnes one. But even then, I'm like, eh, okay. Like, the Ben Simmons thing really screwed it up because there was a bunch of young stars that we could, that we knew were off the table to begin with. So th- that alone made me say, oh, hell no, I'm not trading. Yeah, well, I, another reason why I, I, I roll my eyes and you're like, I can't believe you're not optimistic about this guy. He's already pissed me off two major times in the playoffs and with that. Like both both instances, you're already nothing but a net negative. There's actually assholes on, on the net subreddit. They got the nerve to be shocked. He got booed at Ar- Arthur Ashe Stadium, Washington Tennis. Are you fucking kidding me, guys? It's New York City. He doesn't even have to be a net to get booed there. The fact that he is a net, it's not uh, hate towards nets. It's hate towards that asshole, that individual. Like it, it's crazy. It's just crazy to me that there's people out there that think he was getting booed because he's a net. Are you? Like, yeah, he started his career in the playoffs. Like, what are you talking about? Again. And I, also, there's probably Australians in that crowd. It's New York City. Like I like I said, all offseason, I'll see y'all at the parade. And if you, you hate it all summer, don't come. If you hate it all summer, I'll, I'll be waiting hey, to you. This, this man has the nerve to sit up here and say, if you hate it all summer. No, no, no. How about they stop hating on us and taking Nets fans for granted? How about that? Hey, I can't control that. How, how about, you know, maybe not expecting the world when you ain't even show up? Hey, bro, they're entitled superstars. That's what you're dealing with. Again, I told you that three years ago. <laughs> I told you that three years ago. All right, whatever. We're here. This this was more, was more productive than the one uh, yesterday that got scrapped because of technical issues. Just so I'm happy about that. We sound way more mature this time around. Both of us, even even the a hole in denial uh, with the Naruto shirt on, like even he ha- had some uh, moments of delusion that sounded good at least. Tell me where they can find you, bro. I said because I said I predicted this. I, I'm confused. You can find me at Never for Brett Me. Brett Tradamus. That's N E V A underscore the number four B R E C T underscore M E on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at not the Chuck D on all the socials. We're at the underscore dope blog on Instagram. The dope blog, all one word on Twitter. www.thedope.blog is the site I haven't updated in a while. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and since you're watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe, and join us next time as we continue to discuss other people's excellence. Deuces.